Hi everyone, Mrs. Reddy again. Here we go with presidential roles in the foreign policy sphere. First of all, as chief diplomat, shapes and uh, administers the nation's foreign policy. And we talked about the president can act more unilaterally than with domestic policy, meaning that he can make decisions without working with Congress quite often. And remember that the president is more likely to get congressional approval of proposed policies in foreign affairs from Congress than in domestic affairs. Because members of Congress tend to be most concerned with domestic policy. In the role of chief diplomat, the president negotiates treaties, enters into executive agreements. What are executive agreements? Uh, they are a pact between the president and the head of state of a, a foreign nation. They're not binding on future presidents. They do have the force of law, though, for that president's administration. Um, examples of executive agreements would be the Vietnam Peace, agreement and the SALT agreement, which is the Strategic Arms Limitations Treaty, which limited offensive nuclear weapons. The president also extends diplomatic recognition to foreign nations uh, when they are considered legitimate, appoints ambassadors to other nations, hosts state dinners at the White House, acts as chief diplomat and now on to commander-in-chief the president is the supreme military commander of the u.s armed forces decides when to send in troops sets military strategy in peace and wartime war powers resolution this is something you need to know about it was put in place in 1973 after the Vietnam War. Congress decided that they wanted to restrict somewhat the president's ability to um, send troops to war-torn areas or to areas where we've been attacked uh, without their involvement. So the president can still do this, but must appear before Congress within 48 hours of committing troops to explain why, where, and when. And then Congress has 60 days to either extend the stay of the troops or to require that they are brought home. And if after 60 days or at 60 days they have to come home, the president has 30 days to bring them home. Uh, now it is considered leg a legislative veto. In other words, the Congress vetoing the president because Congress might say, Mr. President, as Commander-in-Chief, you committed the troops, but we are requiring that you bring them home. Um, it's been questioned as overstepping separation of powers, Congress tinkering with the President's powers as Commander-in-Chief. It hasn't made it to the Supreme Court yet. Most Presidents have sent troops in and ignored this. Um, the Vietnam War, the Iraq War, Persian Gulf War, so stay tuned, we'll see what happens with the War Powers Resolution. Um, overlap in domestic and foreign policy roles as Chief Executive, which would be domestic role, and Chief of State, which would be a foreign policy role. As Chief Executive, the President is the nation's leader in both domestic and foreign policy. He or she appoints staff charged with developing policy for the President how the bureaucracy implements the laws or enforces the laws. And as chief of state, the president is the symbolic leader of our nation, kind of like a king or queen. President and the executive branch. The president is charged with ensuring laws be faithfully executed. That's the take care clause. Oversees the bureaucracy, which we will be studying next and is leader of the executive branch that includes the vice president, the cabinet, White House offices, and the entire federal bureaucracy. Vice president's role. 
vice president is first in line of succession to the presidency sometimes acts as a legislative liaison between Congress and the president. The vice president is president of the Senate and decides, casts the deciding vote in a tie. And that's really about the only time the vice president gets involved with the Senate. And then what is a balanced ticket? Well, that involves the vice president because uh, it means that presidents choose their vice presidential running mate Trump has chosen Mike Spence. Hillary Clinton has chosen Tim Kaine. Um, they choose someone not only that they like and trust and respect, but also who will broaden their appeal to the voters and increase their chances of getting elected. So they are going to possibly look at someone who's different in their ideology, age, gender, race, ethnicity, to make them more electable. Okay, that's it for this PowerPoint. Now on to the next one.